The video you are about to watch is from an old woodworking magazine that I published during the years of 2003 to approximately 2006. This was a very unique magazine. It was purely video content and it was distributed on DVDs. The magazine ran for approximately three and a half years and then uh, due to financial concerns we simply had to terminate the magazine. We moved on to other things over the last roughly 15 years. However, there has been a request to resurrect this content, so I've gone through the trouble to get the equipment, the products, everything I needed in order to bring this content back to life to share with everyone. Here on this YouTube channel, we'll be putting up approximately 100 to 120 of the original stories that appeared in that magazine. The magazine was called Woodworking at Home Magazine, and it was truly one of a kind in the world. I really hope you enjoy these videos, and please tell your friends about them. Hi, my name is Joe Garza, and I am with Wood Expressions, and located in Madison, Wisconsin. And in previous issues, uh, you may have recognized some of the work that I have uh, supplied that uh, Chris has actually featured on the bragging rights. And one piece here that I have here in front may look familiar to some folks is a elk scene that I had uh, cut out out of black walnut. It's approximately just shy of eight feet in length. And this piece here, a lot of folks have uh, probably thought, and Chris had mentioned at the end of that one segment, is Joe, how, log how large is your scroll saw? Well, what I use is just a very open generic scroll saw. It's a 20 inch scroll saw that I'm using. Uh, it's not really the tools that I'm using or the techniques that I use which does help in the process of creating such a large uh, uh, cutting, but it's the blades that I use. And today we're going to go through and show you some of the techniques and the uh, ideas that I've worked with now in the past years of cutting out some of these larger pieces as far as even the smaller um, items, maybe a foot or two feet in uh, length. I've got a piece of black walnut here that uh, I cut and machined. Uh, to kind of give you an idea, what happens is I go and cut all my own logs, I machine them into slabs, I sticker them, and then we dry them. There's a local mill in the northern portion of Wisconsin, a friend of mine, and I buy an entire log. Well, when I go and look for these logs, one characteristic or one detail I try to find is either broken limbs that are actually uh, been cut off uh, years back before the tree was taken down. And as you can see on this one here, on this black walnut, you can see there was a limb right here. And what happens is the tree will actually start to grow over the top and create like a scab. And this is a piece that I've cut now into a smaller section so I'm able to start to work on and get it prepared for me to put a pattern on there and start the cutting on the scroll saw. And the first step I do is I run it through a drum sander or some means of being able to flatten out and create a nice soft surface on the front side or the cutting side that you actually be cutting on. An additional preparation, what I also uh, do to prepare the piece is once I run them through the drum sander, I would then take just an orbital uh, palm sander, start at about 60 grit just to take out the, the, uh, the larger coarse lines from uh, produced by the drum, by the drum sander. And Sand them down to about 220 grit paper. That gives you enough uh, preparation and start to apply the pattern. Now one additional thing depending on where you're going to acquire your slabs is you may want to uh, pay attention to the back side of it that if it seems a little tippy or wobbly and in this case here you can hear a little bit of it moving um, you may want to give yourself a flat surface on the back side and the reason why you may want to do that is that if you start cutting into larger and longer pieces you want something a little bit more stable on the scroll saw table surface itself. So that would be a, an excellent recommendation and I'll show you on one piece here that was one thing I had to do with that. Once the piece is prepared though I'll show you here is <clears throat> on this design right here there's a lot of different patterns that are available out on the market going to different websites, different scroll saw magazines so be very uh, open and very open design of what you would like to actually cut out. Now on this pattern here, uh, well, what I have done in order to prepare this is cut out the pattern roughly to the size that you're actually cutting it out to the slab itself. The next step would be is to actually spray the adhesive to the back side of the pattern. And 
when you get the pattern actually prepared, cut it to roughly to the size of the actual slab that you're using. You spray the adhesive on just until the image starts to appear from the back side. Once the image has appeared through there, let the uh, pattern sit to the side for about 20 seconds approximately, and then the pattern will actually disappear, uh, disappear from you. From that point is to actually apply the pattern to your slab, and then the next steps to follow will be to drill all your starter holes. The next step in order to get the uh, the cutting prepared so we're able to start to cut out the uh, the work itself is to start drilling holes for all the areas that need to be relieved or actually cut out. Uh, this will actually be a time consuming portion because there is an extensive amount of cutting that needs to be done. And one thing I'll point out here that you can see is I actually go through and use a red magic marker and the reason why I use a red magic marker is because when you start drilling all these holes out in sections all this dust that is produced by the blades will start to cover up the holes that you just drilled so it helps you be able to locate the next hole and I've learned on my first uh, cutting that I did that I had to almost start all over and blow out my piece because I did lose the track of the holes as far as the drill bits, the drill bits that I use uh, range anywhere from a number 60 numeric all the way up to a sixteenth of an inch. And depending on the areas that you're actually drilling will depend on the size of the drill bit that you use. Majority of my drilling is done just with a cordless or handheld uh, drill. You can use a drill press depending on the throat or how deep your drill press will allow you to cut. Some of the cuttings I've done up to close to 30 inches wide Unfortunately, I can't use a drill press for that, so I have to stick with the old-fashioned hand drill. When you get ready to prepare to actually start drilling your holes, you'll make all your red marks, identify where your holes are going to be drilled, and from that point there, they have different attachments for different drills, handheld drills, to keep you drilling square. That is one particular thing you like to try to do is to drill your holes and make sure that they're perpendicular and they're square going down in through the slab. If you get off on a slight angle, there may be an adjoining piece next to it that you may end up cutting out or missing that piece because the holes were drilled crookedly. So we'll drill a couple hole here, holes here just to get it prepared and ready. I usually hold the bit off the piece just slightly, start my drill slowly, and then slowly drill inside. One hole is drilled, go on to the next section and drill another hole. Now in this cutting here you probably have close to about 150 different holes that need to be drilled. So it will take some time and I emphasize please take your time when you do these holes because when the cutting starts to appear you'll start seeing the holes that were left out if you drilled your hole a little crooked. As I mentioned earlier in the beginning of the show I had pointed out that the blades that I use in order for me to create and cut out these larger slabs up to 12 feet in length is primarily is uh, what I use is a spiral blade and the spiral blades that I use and I highly recommend are the Flying Dutchman spiral scroll saw blades and they can be uh, looked at and provided by Mike uh, Morlock and he is actually out of South Dakota and his website is Mike at Mike's workshop .com. and that information will be available at the end of the segment so you'll be able to take a look at his uh, blades and other things that he has to offer but to touch base and show you some of the blades that I use, there are four primary uh, blade sizes that I use. The first one that we're looking at is a 2 ot 0 And if you can envision a spiral staircase, what happens is these blades cut in 360 degrees. You never have to turn a slab or rotate it completely around. These blades allow you to cut from any direction. So essentially you're moving your slab from left to right and back and forth. Considering in the depth of the throat that you have for your scroll saw will limit you to certain size slabs if you start to produce and start to cut larger slabs. As I mentioned before the uh, 2 ot 0 which is the smallest spiral blade that I use right here is the most common one that I have. Uh, it's 48 teeth per inch and the diameter to give you a reference is 24 thousandths of an inch. And that one there is probably, I guess, you consider the workhorse of majority of my cutting, considering that a lot of the cuttings that I do have an extreme amount of detail and very uh, tight corners in which I use that blade there. The second one that I have here is a number one 
uh, spiral blade. That one there has 45 teeth per inch and is 27 thousandths. And as you can see, the blades generally get larger in diameter. This one here I'm looking at is a number three, and this one here is a number five. These are the four primary blades that I use uh, to do, produce and do all my cutting. Now that we're actually ready to start doing some cutting, this particular uh, scroll saw here that we're using has a variable speed. If your saw has a variable speed, I encourage you to start off your saw at a slow pace. And the reason why is that if you accidentally drilled your hole a little bit uh, crooked, it allows the blade to slowly cut itself and work its way back to uh, perpendicular to the slab. It will also prevent you from breaking blades excessively in the very beginning of the startup procedures. We're using a number one spiral blade and I'll turn on the saw and I'll let it slowly start to work its way. Then you can gently increase the speed. Now what we're gonna do is just gonna go around the center of this cutting here, just to show you how versatile the blade is when I mentioned about not having to turn the piece. You can simply go around in tight circles. Other things you'll notice is that on some pieces that you cut out here, they'll actually pop out and come right at you. So don't be surprised if some of your pieces come out back at you. But what I'm doing now is I'm essentially not looking at the blade, is I'm looking actually about a quarter inch in front of the actual blade itself. And I'm following the line, I'm working my way around the design. Feel free to also back up and move around and cut out sections that are larger pieces that may need to come out first be up to your discretion as far as how much moving you want to do, you'll find that there's a certain pace of how quickly you can go with these blades. And as you can tell, I'm going fairly quickly. There's a piece I mentioned that might pop out. We'll work our way around. Very slowly, these blades will break in a heartbeat. So be prepared and have yourself an extra little stock that you can buy these. There are some local stores that you'll be able to maybe find locally where you're at that will sell these blades by the dozen. What I recommend is you buy them by the gross. A gross will compromise of 144 blades. First couple projects, it may take you 50, 60 blades or so. Once you're done cutting out a section, Simply go back to the open part, turn your saw down, and move on to the next hole. Now on this cut here, we decided to move in a little farther uh, inside the piece. And what I'd like to point out and show you on this cut is that on the whole entire cutting itself, you'll find about the same techniques to use to go around the curves. But on this one here is a little bit different. And as you can see that the section that we're getting ready to cut out here is actually adjoining to two other cuttings or two other sides that need to be cut out. So what I'd like to show you is what I try to uh, accomplish is to also cut with the blade and remain on the inside of the line that you're getting ready to cut out. And I'll turn on the saw here and I'll show you as we walk through this, increase the blade and the speed, is that I'm actually going to stay just to the inside of the line. So what happens is there's a very thin portion which you can see the white section. That's actually the wood that's going to stay in the piece that's going to hold your piece together. And if we go inside that white area and get close to the adjoining spot, um, chances are if you lose the piece adjoining to the side of it, you'll probably end up going to your cabinet and pulling out some regular wood glue. Glue in this, in this case and you put 20, 30 hours into a piece you'll make that glue work and you'll make that piece uh, disguise that nobody will ever know that a piece had actually broken off. So continue and moving slowly through, through the cutting and once you are done with that one section, like I said, slow down your saw, start, uh, turn it off, and then go on to your next hole. So it's a matter of taking the blade out, changing it in and out, in and out on every hole. Next section here I want to bring up and uh, expose is the last cutting we did was actually a smaller piece and 
Uh, some folks still may be wondering how we maneuver and move the larger slabs that uh, you may want to decide to cut out. What essentially what I do, especially the one here behind me, the elk scene, is I use outfeed rollers and extend them out approximately anywhere from two feet or greater depending on the length of it. And what you want to do is you want to raise the actual cutting up off the actual uh, of your scroll saw so it gives you a little bit more easy uh, movement from side to side. So essentially what you're doing is you're moving the piece from side to side and back and forth. Once your cutting is complete, the next final stage of wrapping up your project is to take your pattern off, uh, use a, a palm sander with 220 grit paper uh, and lightly sand off the areas. Be very careful in some of the areas that may be delicate that you don't want to break those off. But essentially what you're trying to achieve is to remove any uh, excess of adhesive that may be stuck to it. From there, all my cuttings I do is I spray them with the catalyzed lacquer. You can use any finish of your choice. Uh, I keep everything a natural color so I don't use any stains or pigments or dyes, which would be hard to penetrate some of the areas that are actually um, the smaller cutouts. And from there, uh, your next step is to find a new home for your cutting and enjoy it. You'll get an enormous amounts of response from family and friends that come over and you tell them that you did it on a Delta 16 inch scroll saw. This is Joe Garza with Woodworking at Home. I appreciate your time and thank you. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you truly enjoyed it, please help us share this information with the rest of the communities. Please hit the subscribe button, give us a big thumbs up, and be sure to tell your friends about this channel. Thanks again for watching.